Today on Gun News and Reviews, we're going to take a look at the Mini 14 Ranch made by Ruger right here in the USA in New Hampshire. This is a beautiful rifle that's been in continuous production since 1972 when Bill Ruger first brought this to the marketplace. There's been some changes made over the years to improve the accuracy as well as a number of different model types to appeal to various shooters. This particular one is kind of a bare bones affair. Basic wood, blued steel, not a lot of accoutrement, so to speak. It's a rifleman's rifle, and if you're somebody that has all-around needs, 5.56 five, caliber works for you. This is a great rifle to have. The Mini 14 Ranch 5800 series is the latest in the line. A hardwood stock, an adjustable rear sight, a 1 and 9 right hand twist barrel, blued steel, and 7 pound. Well, hey guys, welcome to Gun News and Reviews. I'm David Drake. Today we're going to talk about the Ruger Mini 14. And this is kind of a, a take two video in that. Um, I reviewed the, the stainless version and older configuration of the Mini 14 a couple of years ago. And uh, we'll point to that and you can you can click to, to watch that old video. It's going to include some things such as taking down the rifle and examining the bolt configuration, some things like that, that we're not going to get into today. Rather detailed video of the inner workings and so forth. It's 27 minutes long, so you kind of get the picture. But if you're interested in taking a look at that, I strongly suggest you do so and hope you'll enjoy that as well. Going back to uh, really the early 70s when, when the Ruger Mini 14 came out, what you ended up having was a situation where people would, were always talking about accuracy with relationship to this firearm. In particular, that uh, uh, because of the configuration of the barrel, uh, it being a, a pencil thin type of barrel uh, configuration back then, and uh, when it would heat up, you'd get a lot of barrel whip, a lot of harmonics things going on, which would cause uh, a situation where uh, you didn't get very tight groups at all. So the version I had that was stainless was pretty decent for accuracy, but everybody said, you know, you want to get the 5800 series because these are the ones that have a thicker barrel profile tapered as you go up. And, you know, we can kind of take a look at that. And you can see that it tapers up to a thicker barrel and then it even tapers tapers back as you go so a lot of a lot of changes were made in order to make that make that uh, a more accurate rifle what people used to do in the past they would actually put accurizing accessories on them and here's an actual example of that you see a stabilizing strut which was added to the barrel obviously something like that you just soon have something shoot well out of the box so um, Ruger addressed that and came up with what we'll see when we shoot today uh, it is what I would consider a fairly accurate firearm. Now, keep a couple things in mind when you watch me shoot today. You're not going to see me shooting off sandbags or a sled or anything like that. You're not going to see me shoot with an optic. Now, I will say this. Um, this firearm does come with integral mounts and they also provide Ruger one inch rings where you can put a scope, very easily mount a scope uh, in, in the receiver. And the older ones did not have that either. You saw a lot of workarounds with putting stuff here, or guys doing drilling and tapping. So uh, personally, I don't, I don't shoot most of my ARs or AKs or, or other semi-automatics with optics of any kind other than a red dot sometimes on an AR, this I will shoot the same way. So uh, it's just how I like to shoot. If, if Ruger said, hey Dave, what would you change about this rifle? It would, it would basically be one thing, and it would be to put sights that you don't need a tool to make an adjustment. So this basically can be adjusted for both windage and elevation with the rear sight, but you need to use an Allen wrench and loosen a set screw to make those adjustments. 
Uh, the front sight, I think, is awesome as is. I wouldn't change a thing about it. This came to me out of the box pretty much sighted in after shooting a uh, hundred or so rounds through it today. I may want to do some, some fooling around with the sighting arrangements, but I'm still understanding the sight picture. So before I, I start tweaking stuff, I want to get used to the, the trigger. I want to get used to the rifle and see how it shoots. So how does it shoot? Well, you're going to see me taking my very first shots with this today. We're using 223 Winchester 55 grain ammo at 50 yards to start. And you see that uh, we've got elbows on the bench, but that's about all the support that we have. Uh, the trigger is uh, very nice and predictable. I would uh, definitely, if it were an adjustable trigger, aftermarket trigger, you know, that might help you be a little bit more accurate, but I definitely don't think this, this rifle needs it to be good to go. But just uh, overall, in terms of the way it balances, the way that uh, the sights line up, very nice. So my first five shot group is right here and I did not make any adjustments. I did realize that I was probably pulling a little bit and that's getting used to the trigger. I did shift my point of aim down to get this next result with 10 shots. Thought we'd take a aim at a lower target, smaller target, and believe that I was um, aiming right you know, just in terms of determining the sight picture, and still didn't believe that I necessarily needed to adjust the sight. So I came back and shot this, which tells me I may not need to adjust the sight. We'll find out at 100 yards. But the point is, is, you know, it's a pretty decent 50 yard open sight free hand group. Now going over to 100, Using my point of aim, the same point of aim, I realized that as small as this actually looks with the naked eye at 100, I could actually cut this in half. And when I did that, these are the results I got. And I'd say that's pretty good. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, with my best effort there, this group in here, and, and this right here was the concentrated five-shot group. It's about two MOA at 100. What do you think I could do with magnified optics, guys? By the way, this is what one of the nicest AKs you can get with open sights does at 50 yards. So, <laughs> you know, you want to see how a Ruger Mini 14 compares. It's a hell of a lot more accurate than an AK, at least in this shooter's hands. Being that this is a semi-automatic rifle, I thought we should do a mag dump. Let's watch. Just overall, the workmanship and the quality of this is beautiful. Why do they call this the Mini 14? Real simple, the M14, which uh, is in 762 by 51 NATO which was the U.S. main battle rifle that was kind of between the end of the M1 Grand era and the beginning of the M16 era, um, that, that was called the M14. And the Mini 14 looks and functions very much like the original M14. It's, it's a slightly smaller rifle and it shoots a smaller caliber. Uh, originally 223, but they have got around to shooting actual 556 five, stamped barrels. So. Um, good thing there but just everything about this is nice um, one thing if you're wondering about the magazines these are not AR magazines these are proprietary to Ruger uh, I live in a state that doesn't have magazine restrictions so what shipped to me was two 20 round magazines just like this and this is this is a very nicely made magazine I had reported in the past by the way on my last review that I'd have trouble with some of the aftermarket magazines and it had chosen to just buy Ruger magazines. Uh, I did see comments from some of the viewers that said they've had pro mags and other types of magazines work just fine. So I guess it's all comes down to personal experience. I know if I'm going to get a 30 rounder or additional 20 rounders, I'm going to buy them from Ruger. So um, a little bit different system though, uh, because it, it is proprietary. It's got kind of a a rock into place scenario that's a little bit more like an AK. And what that involves is basically the circle you see here 
lining that up with an internal pin and once that clicks in you rock it back so there you go in place very nicely and uh, I, I do like the the look aesthetically of a 20 rounder versus a 30 rounder in this particular rifle but everything about it is just aesthetically uh, very pleasing and it's got that steel and walnut look which somehow seems tame for something that can definitely bite like a dragon shoot just like an ar-15 speaking of the ar-15 when the mini 14 was introduced in 1972 by bill ruger the only other semi-automatic rifle that shot 223 that was available on the market would have been something like this colt sp now this is an sp2 at that time it would have been an sp1 but you get the basic drift you've got Two rifles, which had 20-round capacity, could do the same types of things, but using very different operating systems, and looked very differently. Mini-14 never caught on from a military perspective, but that's probably more to do with the fact the military was already invested in the M16. So you may want this rifle because you want something with a little bit more of a classic look. You might want this rifle just because... You want something that functions like that with a short stroke piston gas operated scenario as opposed to direct impingement. You may want this rifle because it looks more innocent. We shot this rifle today with several different types of ammo. Winchester 223 55 grain. We shot it with uh, 62 grain. We shot it with Russian steel case ammo, some Tula that I actually have. And all of it worked flawlessly. And uh, I wasn't really able to determine the difference in accuracy too much between them. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this rifle. But everything about it's really cool. You're going to see, too, very much like an M1 Grand. There's your safety. So there's been some people that I've seen actually comment in the past, what's up with that safety? That's a really stupid idea. And all they're doing is copying the M1 Grand. The takedown's a lot like that too. The trigger hinges up and you pull that up and that allows you to take the entire uh, receiver and barrel out of the stock assembly. And that's how you do the takedown. Again, uh, take a look at my prior video. Strongly encourage you to do that if you wanna see that. So we're gonna keep shooting this. We may put a magnified optic on it just to test out absolute accuracy at some point. But uh, wanna once again thank the folks at Ruger uh, who are very responsive. Obviously they're known for their customer service. If you're part of their writers and evaluators program like I am, they're super responsive as well. And uh, thanks guys for uh, providing this for me to bring to the viewers on gun news and reviews. We wanna once again thank the great folks at Ruger for providing this rifle for a review today for Gun news and more reviews like this, please share to like and subscribe, Gun News and Reviews.